fresh examples of what I was talking about yesterday. You see, Dr. Shirosh in the debate, he mentioned one of the most stupendous feet of Hazrat Isa Al Islam, Jesus. And he quoted from John, Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 13. He quoted, he says, No man has ascended into heaven. No man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Except the Son of Man who descended from heaven, who is in heaven. That's John chapter 3 verse 13. He quoted that. No man has gone up except Jesus. But the man hadn't gone up when this thing was written. It, it hasn't happened. The, the ascension had not happened. And the man is talking that no man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man, Jesus, who descended from heaven. Did he descend from heaven? Luke tells us that when he was eight days old, Luke tells us, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. So where did he come out from? From his mother's womb. He said he descended from heaven. Who saw him coming down? The nurses and whoever were helping Mary in the stable, they saw this Jesus, this puny little child with all the filth and the muck, which made his mother impure for 40 days according to Jewish law, coming out of his mother's womb. Now they said, no, he descended from heaven. Who is in heaven? And who is in heaven? But the man was on earth and is having a rough time with the Jews. He's in hell. The Jews are giving hells to him and he, said, and he is in heaven. So in the next, you remember the five major revisions? In the sixth major revision, the words who is in heaven is now eliminated. In the revised standard version, who is in heaven is taken out. Because they know it's not fitting. The man is here on earth and says, who is in heaven? What heaven? This hell that you are in. Is that your heaven? The book gives you devilish advice. The Bible, if it's the word of God, listen to what it says. It says, give strong drink, hard liquor, strong drink, hard liquor, to him who is perishing. Anybody who's about to die, any nation is about to perish, what you do, give them strong drink, give them hard liquor. Open your book. Open the Bible and if you have it, check it up. The book of Proverbs chapter 31 verses 6 and 7. Proverbs chapter 31 verses 6 and 7. Open your Bibles and see the advice given, this devilish advice given by God. That if a people are dying, like the Abor aboriginals of Australia, the white man has been giving him drink. The Red Indians, you go to America, you go to Canada, see what is the, the fate of these people. Drink, drink, drink. In Africa, drink, alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. The first freedom that my country gave to the black people was what they call the bottle franchise. You can buy a bottle now. Bottle franchise was the first franchise that we ever received in South Africa was the bottle. Give him drink. You want to make a nation to perish? You want to destroy a people? Give him strong drink, says the Holy Bible. Let him drink and forget his poverty. Yes, forget his sorrow and remember his misery no more. That's the advice. God gives you that advice. And I have been seeing, you know, as a boy, I used to go and see a lot of these cowboy films. And when the guy is dying, I see that they give him a tot. They give him a drink. And then, then the guy goes off peacefully. The man is dying, they give him drink. The man is dying, they give him drink. I say, where did you get this idea from? A man who's dying, if the Muslims, they give them honey in water. You know that? Easy digestible, give you quick energy. The man is on the, on the throes of death. You give him hard drink, strong drink, hard liquor. No, that's what the Bible says, give him hard drink. So they give hard drink. A man is dying, give him hard drink. A nation is perishing, give him hard drink, hard liquor. I don't know how Shurush forgot. You see, in the previous debate, he was quoting from the book of Peter, 2 Peter, verses 1. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 21. And Jimmy Swaggart also, amazing, they are all the evangelists are quoting the same verses. 
In America, Jimmy Swaggart, if you see the tape, he's quoting that verse, and you see the tape of Bisharosh, he's quoting the same verse. The verse, I don't know if he forgot yesterday because there's too many written things to read out. It says here, For the prophecy came not, prophecy, telling you things that is going to happen in the future, came not by the will of man, by the impulse of man, by the whims and fancies of man, no. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. As the Holy Ghost moved them, tickled them, they wrote what they were told to write. And so the whole Bible is from God. Because the Holy Ghost tickled these writers to write what they wrote. But the Bible, get this word of God or not. On that human level we were talking, sane, sober people, I want your judgment. Does God Almighty command his emissary, his prophets, to do shameful things? Will he? And he has it recorded in his book. This is the prince of the prophets, prince of the prophets, according to Shorosh. Isaiah, he calls him prince of the prophets. His book, the book of Isaiah, he calls it the fifth gospel. If there are four gospels in the New Testament, this you can be added and make it the fifth gospel, according to Shorosh. This prince of the prophets, this is what God does to him. At the same time, speak the Lord to Isaiah. God spoke to Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and lose the sackcloth from thy loins. You know the sackcloth that you're tying? Untie that. And put the, off thy shoes from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. A prophet of God, for three years, he's walking up and down the streets of Jerusalem or wherever he was, absolutely naked, not even a G-string. Can you imagine God giving such instructions to his prophet, his emissary? Go walk, and three years in front of his mother, in front of his daughters, sisters, everybody. He is walking a prophet of God, one of the mightiest of the prophets of the Bible. He is walking naked for three years. And the Lord said, like as my servant Isaiah had walked naked and barefoot three years, so you also were going to make you to do the same. Allah bari ta'ala tells in the Quran, he says that he does not. He says, Kul, tell them, Inna Allah la ya'muru bil fasha. Allah does not command any shameful deed. You say about Allah what you don't know? In ignorance, God Almighty telling His prophets to go walk about naked <laughs> and speaking language like this, God talking, say, Behold, I will corrupt your seed. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. You know what's dung? You know what's dung? Use excreta. Yes, God Almighty is going to spread dung on your faces. Even the dung of your solemn feasts. And one shall take you away with it. Malachi 2, 3. And thou shalt eat it, telling another prophet of his. Another prophet of God, Ezekiel. God tells him, chapter 4, verse 12 of Ezekiel, he says, And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. What? And thou shalt bake it with dung that come out of man in their sight. What you see, fresh dung, fresh excreta with barley cakes, you shall eat it. This is, the, this is God Almighty telling his prophet to, to eat barley cakes with, and fresh dung too, fresh. It must be fresh, not that stale dried up thing you know, that you can burn like goat, goat, this thing. God Almighty. He is not like Shylock. You know Shylock, Shakespeare made him famous, Shylock. He wanted that Christian pound of flesh. He entered into a contract, an agreement with this Christian. He lent him some money. He said, look, by a certain date, if you don't pay, I'll, I'll take one pound of flesh. Shakespeare made Shylock famous. He made the Jews famous. Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. When the contract was broken, he is demanding for one pound of flesh. That's all. He said, I want one according to contract. But God Almighty, He is not satisfied with one for one. Mm -hmm. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 5, He says, For I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. You make a sin, I am going to visit their sins and punish them to third and fourth generation out of those who hate me. And 
He's going to punish you seven times over for whatever you do. And after all, Leviticus chapter 26, verses 18, 23, 24, 28. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. If you, you didn't do your homework, my son, so you're supposed to get one cut, one lash. But no, no, no. This headmaster of yours will give you seven cuts. Everybody's supposed to get one cut for not doing homework, you will get seven cuts. And if by these things you are not reformed by me, but walk contrary to me, then also will walk contrary to you, and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins, seven times. Then I also again, then I also will walk contrary to you in fury, and I even I will chastise you seven times for your sins. Allah tells us in the Quran, this is what he says, Inna Allah la yazlimu misqala zarra. Allah will not do the least bit of injustice to you. He says, Jaa bil hasanati falahu khayrum minha. If you do a good deed, he will reward you. Better than your deed. You do one good deed, Allah says, He'll reward you better than your deed. He can reward you a million fold for every deed of yours, good deed of yours. Woman jaa bi sayyati, but if you do anything evil, for la yuzzal lazina amil sayyat illa makanu, makanu yamadun. And the doers of evil are only punished to the extent of their deeds. Whatever you deserve, you get. You do good, Allah can reward you a million fold. You do evil, to the extent of what you have done, you will be punished. The God of the Bible says, seven times over. And I'm going to visit the sins of the fathers into the third and fourth generation, taking revenge. God Almighty, He deceives, says the Bible. He deceives. He says He deceives. Or oh, the prophet is crying out. Jeremiah the prophet, he says. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 7, he says. Oh Lord, oh Lord, you deceived me and I was deceived. God, you deceived me and I was deceived. You are stronger than I and have prevailed. What can I do? I'm helpless. If you want to deceive me, how can I resist deception? You are stronger than I and have prevailed. I'm in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. Oh Lord, you deceive me. You are a deceiver. God is a deceiver. Allah tells you in the Quran that He guides, He does not misguide. And on and on. There's so much. There's so much. Wallah, there's so much. I can keep you here further for hours, but that is not my. اصبح بصوتك اسمع لك وانا اقرا كلام الله داوي نفوسنا لنحس في اعماقنا اعماقنا الايمان فؤاد كالحجارات قسوه فاذا وعد القران حين اللانا كم من فؤاد كالحجاره قسوه فاذا وعد القران حين اللانا فاذا وعد القران حين اللانا اقرا وخيرا Oh, take